Today, we're going to be talking about PayPal. We'll dive into the numbers in their recent earnings announcement, and we'll discuss the one factor that has led most investors to buy into PayPal, and that is valuation. So if you enjoy the video, drop a like down below, and if you want to see more videos like this one, make sure to subscribe. Year to date, PayPal is up 5.3%. However, after they announced their earnings on July 30th, the stock price ran up over 11%. There was a broader sell-off in the market that led the stock to fall about 8% down to $60. However, it ran back up over the next few days to around $65 per share where it is currently trading at. And the reason PayPal traded up over 11% after earnings is that they came through with very solid numbers. On July 30th, they reported EPS of $1.19, which was a 20% surprise compared to analyst expectations of $0.99. Cents. And revenue came in at $7.88 billion, which was a slight beat of just under 1%. In terms of what these numbers actually represent on a year-over-year -year increase, revenue of $7.88 billion represents a year-over-year -year increase of 8% or 9% on a constant currency basis. When we're talking about non-GAAP EPS of $1.19, this is actually an incredible 36% growth year-over-year. -year. Also, a couple other key metrics on this slide, their total payment volume grew by 11% year-over-year to $416 billion. Transaction margin in terms of dollars grew by 8%. You'd actually like to see this number growing by at least 11%, if not more, because that means that they're taking a little bit less margin on some of these transactions. Free cash flow came in at $1.368 billion. Keep in mind that a year ago, they had a negative impact associated with their buy now, pay later loans, and that was around $1.2 billion. So they put up a quarter of negative $0.4 billion of free cash flow. However, if you remove that impact, it actually would have been closer to $0.8 billion of positive free cash flow. So there is some growth here year over year. However, they do not represent it with a percentage. With non-GAAP EPS numbers, companies can kind of pick and choose what actually goes into that metric. So seeing this 36% growth year over year is impressive. However, it's also important to keep in mind where GAAP EPS comes in at. And GAAP EPS grew 17% to $1.08. To put that in perspective, a year ago, they put up $0.92 cents of GAAP EPS. So year over year, they've been able to grow their GAAP EPS by about 16 cents. And this graph is not updated yet. It isn't showing the most recent quarter, but if we add 16 cents onto this $3.97 of trailing 12 month GAAP EPS, that actually gets us to $4.13 of GAAP EPS. And that gets us very similar to numbers that we were seeing back in 2021. There are some mixed results when we look at their account and activity metrics. Their active accounts came in at 429 million active accounts. This is actually down around 0.4% year over year. However, their number of payment transactions came in just under 6.6 .6 billion transactions, which is up 8% year over year. And their number of transactions per active account actually increased 11% year over year to 60.9. This is a very interesting slide from their investor presentation. We're seeing numbers from Q3 and Q4 of 2021 all the way through till the current quarter of Q2 of 2024. And we can put that in perspective in terms of their stock price at the time, because in Q3 and Q4 of 2021, they were trading anywhere from $180 per share all the way up to $300 per share. And over that time period, the stock actually fell by around 40%. And this major drop in the stock price has a lot to do with the slowing down of some of these key metrics. Their active accounts prior to Q3 of 2021 was growing in the 20% range and it slowed down significantly to 15% and then 13% by the end of 2021. And we saw this slowing down continue through 2022. By the end of 2022, their active accounts was only growing 2% year over year. And then by the end of 2023, they were actually losing 2% year over year in terms of their active accounts. However, it appears that we may be seeing them turn a corner as they're back to break even on their active accounts. And maybe by the end of 2024, we can see them get back to at least 2% growth year over year. We've also seen a deceleration of growth in their number of payment transactions. Back in 2021, they were growing 22% and 21% in the third and fourth quarters respectively. We've seen that fall all the way down to 10% growth year over year by Q2 of 2023. And right now it's sitting at 8% year over year growth in Q2 of 2024. So we really wanna see this number turn around and 
get back closer to that 15% mark at the very least, if not back up into the 20% growth. And in my opinion, I think over time, PayPal can get back to growth rates in terms of their active accounts as well as their number of transactions. Ultimately, what it's going to take is some strengthening of the economy. If we think back to 2021 and 2022, really the investors in the market knew that the Fed were going to have to start raising interest rates. And over the course of 2022, we went from a basically 0% interest rate all the way up to 4.1% by December of 2022. This was a dramatic increase in interest rates. It's the highest interest rates that we had actually seen since back in 2007. And ultimately, this scared a lot of investors and really slowed down spending in the economy. And that really has affected companies like PayPal and PayPal themselves in not only growing their active accounts, but also growing the number of people using their platform. And ultimately for PayPal, this really comes down to their growth rates because fundamentally the business is in a great spot. Their top line revenue back in 2019 was sitting at $17.7 billion and they have increased that all the way up to $30.4 billion. However, their growth in terms of their top line has decreased significantly. In 2019, they were growing around 17% year over year. However, currently it's sitting a lot closer to 8% growth year over year. And the bottom line shows a similar trend. Back at the end of 2019, they were bringing in $2.07 of trailing 12-month EPS. That has grown to $3.97 of trailing 12-month EPS, or with the new quarter in $4.13 of trailing 12-month EPS. And that's basically the same as where it was three years ago in 2021. And when you start seeing the slowing down of growth of key metrics like top line revenue, bottom line EPS numbers, active accounts, anything like that, that really starts affecting the valuation. Valuation is how much investors are willing to pay for a company. And ultimately, that comes down to the amount of growth that the investors are anticipating to happen for the company. When you start seeing these growth rates fall off a cliff, that drives down valuation. And that's why PayPal right now is trading at a forward P ratio of a 14.79. To put that a little bit into perspective, the S&P 500 right now is trading at a forward P ratio of a 21. 0.92, and the NASDAQ 100 is trading at a forward P ratio of a 27.35. And we can compare some of the growth rates of these indexes because the S&P 500 is estimated to grow 9.4% in terms of its earnings year over year. Compared to PayPal, it's growing 17% in terms of its gap EPS year over year, so significantly higher than this. However, the NASDAQ is primarily made up of information and technology companies, which are growing at 16%. 0.5% year over year in 2024. So this is a lot more in line with where PayPal's at. In terms of revenue for the S&P 500, the estimated growth is only 4.5%, which again, PayPal is growing at 8%, which is very similar again to information and technology companies, which are expected to grow at 9.4% in 2024. We can use all of these valuation metrics to come up with price targets for PayPal. So PayPal is currently trading at $64.72 with a forward P ratio of 14.79. A potential forward P ratio in line with the S&P 500 would be 21.92, which would mean a price target of $95.92, which would be almost a 50% return from the current stock price. If PayPal were to trade in line with the NASDAQ, that would be a forward P ratio of a 27.35, which would be a potential price target of $119.68, or an 85% increase from the current stock price. And for PayPal to hit these higher valuations, we need to see them achieve higher growth rates. And they provided guidance for Q3 as well as fiscal year 24. And their revenue for Q3, they're expecting mid to single digit growth. And honestly, their gap EPS number is only expected to come in at 96 cents to 98 cents. I think both of these numbers are probably low. I really hope they're low because otherwise this would be a very poor quarter. If they only come in with mid single digit growth, we're talking about 5% growth year over year. That is not a great look. And this gap EPS number would be okay. But again, we saw them put up such a great quarter this quarter. It would be a little bit disappointing if we see them revert back down to around 96 to 98 cents. Their full year guidance looks a little more bright because they're expecting their non-gap EPS to grow low to mid teens versus mid to high single digits, what they previously guided to, as well as their gap EPS, they're expecting to come in at $3.88 to $3.98 versus the prior guidance 
of $3.65. They've also increased their free cash flow estimate to $6 billion from $5 billion. So overall, this earnings announcement to me was very solid. I think they came through with very good EPS numbers, their gap and non-gap EPS numbers. However, they do need to get back to higher growth. That is ultimately where this company needs to go for investors to respect it again and for the valuation to get back to where it really needs to be, either in line with the S&P 500 or even potentially in line with the NASDAQ. But keep in mind, don't buy a company just because I talked about it here on YouTube. Make sure you are doing your own research and looking into companies that meet your risk tolerance as well as your time horizon. With all of that said, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, drop a like down below. And if you want to see more videos like this one, make sure to subscribe. And as always, guys, have a wonderful rest of your day. And for the joke of the day, what do you get from a pampered cow? Check the comments down below for the answer. Thanks for watching.